Welcome to my garage, but more importantly, welcome to my tour of these dope DIY model rocket launch controllers. Whether you're thinking about building one, you've already built one, or you have no idea what these are, but the thumbnail just looked pretty. Um, welcome, I am glad you are here. I am super pumped about how these came out and I'm pumped to show them to you. I wanted to do this video to give you a quick tour of them, but probably more importantly, I wanna talk about three of the biggest things I learned while making these launch controllers. I mean, I probably learned a thousand things, like 2,000 things while making these, but the three biggest, I'm only gonna talk about three things here. But before I jump on the tour, I need to say, stick around for the end of this video because we have a really important announcement. I'm gonna tell you how you can build one of these launch controllers and how it can actually be a lot easier than you think. But okay, let's look at the tour. Biggest question is obviously, why build a launch controller? Like I have these, they came in the old starter sets. Why build a launch controller? I'm glad you asked. Because the easiest answer for why I build a launch controller is that it's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome to launch a model rocket with a controller you built yourself. It has completely transformed the launch experience for me. Instead of pushing a button that feels like I'm holding a Wii remote, I feel like I'm doing an actual launch sequence. It takes me back to when I would watch SpaceX videos, when I'd listen to the Apollo launch. As I'm building up, as I'm turning the keys, as I'm doing the launch sequence here, I feel my heart rate going up. I feel the excitement building. I'm getting a smile on my face just talking about it because it's awesome. That is why you build a launch controller because it is a thousand times more fun to launch rockets with one of these than one of these. I want to feel like I'm launching a rocket, not like I'm changing the channel on my TV. I decided to make two controllers, one very minimal. I said, what are the basics for a launch controller? I want a clear on-off toggle, I want a continuity light, and I want a launch button. Which this brings me to the first lesson I wanted to share with y'all. When it got into components, when it got into picking the different components I wanted, not only what kind of components, but where to source them from, how I wanted them to look, there is an insane amount of components and electrical stuff out there. I just, I was floored at the number of choices, the number of things I had to learn just to get the components I wanted, like for the basic launch controller. I'm not trying to build a launch controller that can fly, <laughs> like a drone launch controller. I'm just trying to build the basic one. But the number of components and choices and different styles out there, some components are one-to-one -one connections, some are one-to-many or many-to-one, or one are continuous or semi-continuous or not continuous. I mean, it's crazy. So after way too much time researching, finding the perfect ones, ordering it, realizing it wasn't the perfect one, wasting that money, ordering another one, I found the components that look and feel perfect just like I've wanted. I wouldn't change a thing about what I have right here. Okay, so here is how the launch controller works. We start it on the left and flip the on-off toggle. Next comes the continuity light, which whether it comes on or not depends on if we have continuity through the launch controller, out to the rocket, and then back to the launch controller. So you can see right now it's off because there's no continuity. The clips are not attached to anything. But when the clips are attached to each other, there we go, our continuity light comes right on. And then of course, when you're ready to launch, but in the actual world, you wouldn't put the clips together, you'd use one of these, you'd use an igniter. So let's do that again. Clips are not touching, flip it on, we have no continuity. I'll clip one end onto one side of the igniter. And as soon as I clip the other end onto the other side of the igniter, just like that, the light comes on because we have continuity through the igniter. But this brings me to the second point that I wanted to share with you, and that's this moment right here. Right now we have electricity running through the launch controller, through the igniter that ignites with electricity, and then back to the launch controller. At this moment, electricity is running through the igniter that ignites with electricity. <laughs> this moment, just 
floored me for some reason. Like I always assume no electricity will go to this until you hit the launch controller and that pushes all the electricity to it and catches on fire. That's simple, it's black and white, but to, for us to need to put electricity through the igniter and enough electricity that this is well lit so that you could even see it during the daylight, but not enough for this to actually light was so much more complex than I thought. This moment kind of blew my mind when I realized what we had to do here. And it's a whole different story for how we actually control the amount of electricity flowing in here and how that's different when we hit the launch button. But we don't have time for that story. We're on the tour. We're coming up to everyone's favorite part of this launch controller. I'll pull it in here. We have continuity through the igniter. Everything's on. We're ready for the launch. We're ready for five, four, three, two, one. Zero. It feels good. It always feels good. It's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> it still gets me fired up and we're not even doing a rocket. That's just the igniter. Okay, now we switch over to the more complex control. This is the puppy that we said, let's put all the bells and whistles into it. We want something with a full launch sequence. I want to give myself the time during the launch to be flipping switches, turning keys, letting me and my son, our heart rates get excited as we are getting closer and closer to hitting that launch button. This is exactly what we had in mind. So it starts with the key ignition and then from left to right, we flip the toggles. We've got a power light for each one of the toggles. Two, this next one is gonna be our continuity light, which all three of these will come on. But we also have a surprise for you that's right, we put a buzzer as part of the continuity system in this launch controller. Have you ever been out in the sun on like a crazy sunny day where you can't hardly even see what's on your phone, you can't see your watch? Well, these lights, even the ones that are daytime appropriate, can be hard to see out there. So we put in a buzzer so our continuity system not only has a visual cue, but also has the audible cue of, hey, you have continuity through the igniter, you push that button, this thing's going in the air. <laughs> we want to know that. This brings me to the third thing I wanted to highlight, and that is when it comes to building your launch controller, you can build it however you want to build it. Like, the sky's the limit. Figure out what is kind of your dream situation and make that happen. What if you have two kids? Or what if it's you and your brother who are launching rockets together and there's always fighting over who gets to push the button? Who's gonna be the one to launch the rocket? What if you built a launch controller that had not one launch button, but a second launch button, and the rocket could only be launched if you hit both of them down at the same time? Then both kids would get to be the one to launch the rocket, and they could only do it if they do it together. Think like that, think creatively. What is gonna be the perfect rocket for you? You can make it happen with just the basic understanding of circuitry, launch controllers, how to do it safely you can customize this exactly for what you want it to be. I promised an exciting announcement. Here it is. This is the moment. If I, a few months ago, saw these launch controllers laid out, I would be completely intimidated by them. These don't look like DIY rocket launchers. These look like something you buy, that you just buy it and they ship it to you. These don't look like DIY setups right here. Well, don't worry, with a little bit of help, you 100% can build these launch controllers. Because when we built these, we meticulously recorded every moment of it, from sourcing the components, to selecting the boxes, prepping the boxes, designing our layout electronically, testing the components, doing the wiring, prepping the boxes, drilling the holes, the whole thing. We meticulously recorded every single step so that we could put together a course to teach you how to do this. Even if you have never touched a wire before, you don't know anything about circuitry, you don't know what a volt is, you can still do this because we hold your hand and walk you through every step of the way. We went through the hard stuff. We went through the wasted time, the wasted money, the frustration, so that it could be easy for you. Imagine, one, impressing your kids and your friends with these epic looking controllers, but more importantly, bring back some of the joy of the launch sequence, the joy of launching model rockets with these controllers that look and feel amazing. So how you doing? You with me still? Are you ready to fall in love with model rockets again? Are you ready to take the hobby to the next level? 
Then scroll down, find the link in the description, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. It'll answer every question you could have about this. But I am fired up about these launch controllers, and I'm not even launching rockets right now. I am fired up for you to be able to have the same experience that I am, because I am stoked. I am gonna turn off this camera and go launch some rockets right now. I'm fired up. I hope that you are fired up too. Click the link, let's go, let's build these launch controllers together. Come on.